Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Christopher van der Maude. I'm a developer advocate uh, focusing mainly on security. So the demo that I have for you is around managing security events. What if you set policies for customers and you want to add even more value to your customers and you want to manage their security events as well? Now, how do you do that? So the first question you need to ask yourself are what events are important and what events require human intervention? So obviously you want to automate as much as possible. You don't want to take action on something that has been blocked by Umbrella or AMP already. Uh, you want to take action at, uh, with your analysts only for important events that require human intervention. Now, what I've done for uh, specifically for AMP for endpoints, I basically took all of these tenants from an MSSP portal, and I am basically triggering SecureX workflows based on uh, new events that occur. What I'm doing then is I'm parsing those events per tenant and per event, and based on that, I'm taking actions. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a SecureX a ServiceNow incident, and you can very easily add more modules to this if you want to send an email, send a WebEx Teams notification. It's very easy to do it. And the cool thing of this is that your service desk or your security operations center can just use, for example, ServiceNow as master GUI, and they don't need to go into the tenant interface in advanced malware protection. So obviously it's not scalable to let someone check all the events per tenant per GUI. So you want to automate all of that. And what I've also done is I've integrated ServiceNow as well with SecureX. So if an incident is closed in ServiceNow, it also automatically closes the SecureX incident so that, uh, and adds a external reference of that incident. And your employees of your MSSP partner don't have to do uh, any manual work. So let's check out a demo for that. What I'll do is I'll, um, I have a GitHub repo and this is a integration that I've built. It is built completely on SecureX. I don't think that SecureX right now is 100% multi-tenant. Now, I just wanted to be very clear and upfront on that. Uh, there are plans obviously to do so, but you can already use SecureX for your needs. There is more coming in SecureX. SecureX is our platform, uh, which is basically integrates your entire security portfolio, both Cisco and third party. And you can add a lot of integration modules. Uh, you can add all the Cisco security solutions, but there's much more modules that you can add and you can also add custom modules as well. And again, this is something where you as an MSSP partner can monetize on is if you offer the service for your customer to add custom modules for, I don't know, maybe a 40 gate firewall that they might have. Now, this is, as I mentioned, not completely multi-tenant. You can add as many umbrella tenants as you would like. So what I did, for example, here is I've added a three different umbrella tenants. And what you can also do is have it an umbrella dashboard per tenant. Again, it is not completely multi-tenant in my opinion, because it would have been nice if you can have one SecureX dashboard per tenant and you can quickly switch here between your tenants. But we're getting very close already and more will be announced later. You have all kinds of reports here that, that you can leverage. You can also reach these reports via the API. So um, the API from Cisco is all documented here. Uh, if you click on the question mark and then on APIs. And everything is in Swagger and uses OAuth 2. But actually there's also a dashboard API, which allows you to query all, hey, give me all tiles. So these are tiles which are available. And you can then also quick uh, choose specific tiles and say, all right, give me the information of that tile. And as you can see here, you actually get the information which is normally reported as a title, but you get it in JSON format. And you can actually query it for the last seven days, etc. So you could leverage this API to create custom reports for your customers, email reports, or maybe uh, PDF reports based on this dashboard API. Um, and the nice thing is you don't have to uh, know all of these various modules and query those specifically, 
because you're just querying secure X as basically a proxy. All right, so that is secure X. Secure X also has an orchestrator built in. A secure X orchestrator is a very cool way of using a low to no code approach of creating workflows. And if you want to automatically handle security events as an MSSP partner for your customers, so for your various tenants, you need to have workflows. And workflows, or they're also often called playbooks, are basically automated recipes that if a specific security incident happens, you want to trigger a couple of actions. Now, SecureX orchestration, which I came from from here, is uh, the way to do that. Now, what I actually did is I created a, a set of workflows. There are actually four workflows that I've all documented here, which I've exported as JSON files, and I've explained how to install this. And basically what it does is uh, the first workflow, um, and let me just go through it here, allows you to add new customers. So I created a workflow which takes in API credentials and then adds them, uh, encodes them and adds them to a global table. So if I run this, it will ask, a customer name, so I can say customer PIW, and I'll do client, this is obviously not a real uh, API uh, key, and I'll uh, do client secrets, which usually runs something like this, and I can run this. And what just happened is if I actually added in this table here, where all of the encoded API credentials are stored, uh, it adds a new customer. So as you can see, the customer is just added and the encoded API credentials are stored here, uh, hashed. Um, now the nice thing of this is I have another workflow. What, what it does, it can loop for each customer, loop through this table that I've created with credentials. And it then is triggered by high priority security events. And what I've also done for you is I've actually went through the AMP API, and if I've checked all the event types that are available, and again, these links are all available to you, so don't worry if I'm going a little bit quick. And obviously, this event is not very interesting. A agent has been told to fetch a new policy. That is not very interesting. But a quarantine failure might be interesting, or a Adobe Reader compromise, this can be a very interesting security incident. So what I've done is I've chosen all the incidents that I think are important. I've also documented that in this guide as well. So I, this is, by the way, my take on security incidents. You as a partner should probably go through this list yourself. And uh, what it will then do is it will retrieve all events and it will then check, are there any new events? If so, it will loop through all of those customer events loop through every event, get more information. It will then create a secure X incident and create a ServiceNow incident. And I can actually show you these. So this workflow is something that runs every, as you can see, it runs scheduled. So what I've done right now is I've created a trigger to run every five minutes, but obviously you could maybe trigger this more often. And very soon, uh, new capabilities will come out that you can also trigger this uh, based on webhooks, for example, or on email alerts. Right now, I thought this was a little bit more efficient to do. Now, if I go to, uh, I'm still on SecureX, so I went to, um, just to show you where I'm going, but I'm not skipping any steps, I went to Threat Response, which is an application in SecureX. And as you can see here on the date, I ran this just before our session. As you can see here, it created for company X, there's a new event, threat quarantine. So I turned off the, secure, uh, the event filters real quickly. Normally this wouldn't be a significant incident, obviously. And as you can see here, there's all kinds of information that I've basically reported here. I've also added links, etc. It has been created this morning. What I would like to do is for my service desk or security operations center is I don't want them to go into SecureX orchestration every five minutes to run that workflow. So that happens automatically. I don't want them to go into the M4 endpoints portal 
uh, and I don't want them to go here and check all these dashboards. That is simply not scalable to do that for all of your tenants. So the cool thing is, if you're already using ServiceNow, you can see here that this same incident was created here as well. Now I can click on that incident. And what I've done is I've created a response trigger here as a work note. Uh, and there's another work note here with all kinds of information. I've added a short description, etc. Now what I've actually built into this is if I, if suppose that I go and I, I put this in progress and at a certain point I know, okay, this event has been handled, no more action is needed. Now I click on close and click on update. What it now automatically does is it triggers a other a workflow in, um, I need to find my orchestration. It triggers basically a response workflow to uh, basically close the SecureX incident as well. So now we should, if everything went correctly, you can actually see that here. As you can see, it's now closed. And if I see on the timeline, the status changed to close, the incident time changed. And what I also did is I've added a reference to the actual ServiceNow incident as an external reference. Now, the cool thing is, is that uh, this is basically just a record keeping of my ServiceNow stuff. I can work completely in ServiceNow, but if there's maybe some, someone from the SOC that wants to check uh, if there's an incident related, uh, it is also automatically synced here in threat response. And by the way, how to do this in ServiceNow is all uh, explained here as well. So how to do these steps in ServiceNow is all explained in my GitHub. So with that, uh, these are for your reference, some extra links. I also want to mention there's another cool GitHub project out there, which I would recommend you to check out. And with that, I would like to thank everyone for their time. That will then um, conclude this. Uh, I hope uh, you find it helpful and um, thank you very much.